good morning. All right, I figured now is a good time and good place to do a little intro for today's adventure. We're doing a little bit of double duty today, me and Sal. Hi, girl. <clears throat> we're out looking for sheds, of course, um, but also we're hiking into one of my favorite little creeks. Usually it doesn't get hit by runoff too hard. It, uh, you know, it's a spring creek, um, not a whole lot of snow in the basin. So it's usually pretty good this time of year. Um, but on the way in, we're going to check some pockets that I've never been to before, but I've always wanted to check out. Me and Sal are, we're, we're only about two miles into the hike, but we just, uh, cut up this super steep stuff that I've never been up. And it honestly looks like pretty good moose country, a little bit of elk country up high too. And I've never seen anyone up here. haven't seen any sign of people. So pretty hopeful that we'll find something today. If not, we're at least going to come across some cool stuff, some cool country. If I don't find any sheds, then maybe we'll make this a cool fishing video. Sal's never been up to these little types of creeks before, so we'll see how it goes. It's kind of tough with dogs because they can see the fish and they like to jump in and spook them, but she's got to learn sometime. All right, we actually just came across our first bit of elk sign up on this ridge. Still mostly moose, but I wasn't expecting to get into elk sign this quick. Or even at all for that matter, but stoked on that. I'll start walking this south facing slope a little more. I haven't been following it because of how steep it is, but now it's opened up a little bit. Find me something, Sal. Well, we got to the top of this spine and we've just been following it uphill. Um, anytime you're on these spines, it's always, you always find tons of moose beds, it seems, because they they really like these areas where, it's, where it flattens out, where they can bed down. I mean, deer, elk, moose, they all like to bed in flat areas, but moose in particular, you come down these steep spines and anytime you get to a place where it's flat, like on the top of a precipice or something, um, it's always covered in moose beds and moose crops. We've been following this and we just came across this super, super old carcass, but it's huge. Um, it's gotta be a moose. I'm no expert, but cow moose. She's got that weird little dip on her head. See that, that like right ridge on the forehead. So sure I could look it up and identify it by that, but big old bones. All sorts of fresh and old sign in here. I really like it and it's super easy to hike this ridge once we got up to the spine too. So we're gonna keep following it. Never know, you might get lucky. The way this year's been going, I wouldn't be surprised to find moose shed. It seems like I've been doing really well with those. So hopefully I come across them. I'm about four miles from where I found that nice um, big brown moose shed with Sal a few weeks ago but same type of country, same elevation. So we're just gonna keep going. All right, I'd say we're about halfway done with this climb. We gotta get up there. Then once we're on top of that ridge, we'll just cruise up this canyon, glass whenever we can. Up here, girl. It's your first game bird. Come on. Okay, well, we're almost to the first place where I'm gonna drop down and glass a little bit onto this other ridge. But we're just gonna have a quick snack break. Kind of lunch part one. We got another one of those um, energy mix things. Some cheese, salted nut rolls, my favorite, PB&J. She's killing it.
Okay, we've been gridding this hill for about 30 minutes. This is probably my fourth or fifth pass along here. Still haven't found anything, but there's a lot of elk sign and it's about the right age. So that's got me pretty hopeful. Um, I'm just working my way down to my target elevation. So I'm still kind of not in where I think the zone is, but I will be soon. And uh, then once I'm there, I'll look around for some sign. I'll follow it a bit and I'll kind of work my way through the next few ridges. And then, and then, that, then that's it. <laughs> Never been in here before for shed hunting, but it's good to know there's elk here. I thought there would be just by looking at it on maps. So it's worth a shot at least. And we'll keep giving it our best. It's real thick, which I like because then not a lot of people can glass it, but it's kind of a, a blind pocket. You're kind of coming into a blind pocket here. You can't really keep tabs on it during the winter. The fact that there are elk in here makes me hopeful. I haven't seen any other human sign all day. No boot tracks or nothing, so. I mean, there's gotta be sheds in here. Maybe not ones from this year. Maybe ones from this year, who knows? But there's a lot of shit, a lot of beds, a lot of tracks, and it all seems to be about three or four weeks old, which is right in the zone where we wanna be. There's a nice bed right there. Hey, we just got to the last clearing that we're gonna check. We're walking through so much of this crap. It's like way steep snow. But I sat down and I glassed and I think I just found our first shed. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I'll throw the binos up. It's in between those two pine trees right in the middle of the screen. I'll get the phone scope on there for you. Oh yeah, that's for sure an elk shed. Five point at least. Cool. You know, that's actually the first shed I've ever glassed. You know, I've only been doing this seriously for two years but like I spend so much time glassing and I never found them. And then I go hit the area in my boots and turn up sheds sometimes, sometimes I don't, but this is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna sit here and glass the rest of this stuff for a while before going down to pick it up. I knew this area looked good, so I'm stoked it's got something. Okay, so I just walked across this, um, to, this to the opposite side where I was glassing onto the south facing slope and I did one zig and then as soon as I started my zag, I looked down and I think we got a big old moose antler. Sal's there right now. But yeah, tons of moose sign up here too. A um, little bit of elk sign. I'm thinking this is a cool little secret pocket. Where I'm at, it's so hard to get away from the crowd. After it seems like April 15th, it's nearly impossible to find any browns. I've never even found a white um, elk antler. They just all get picked up so quickly. Dang, this is a sweet moose antler. Pretty sure it's brown. You know, it's always hard to tell with moose antlers because they get so bleached out anyways on that side. But I bet when I pick it up, it's brown underneath. Dang, that thing is sweet. I have a very similar looking um, I think it is a left side too, though, that I picked up. Um, I mean, a ways from here, but in the same mountain range. That thing is dope. Look how bladed he is on that front brow tine. It's gotta be brown, but we'll find out here shortly. What is it, girl? Look. She almost found it before I did. She was on it right after I spotted it. I was just up there. Sick. Let's get this picked up. All right, is it brown? I haven't looked yet. Oh yeah, hell yeah. I'd love to match him up. I've never matched up a moose. That is so cool. Perfect condition. That's a big base too. Damn. I'm just killing it with the moose sheds this year. This is moose shed number four. Still haven't matched one up. This thing's heavy. Oh, we'll throw it on the pack and we'll keep going. It's we did a ton of gridding through here. Um, just kind of like 
zigzagging back and forth and dropping about 15 yards each each time i've made like four or five passes and we're coming up on that elk shed right now i still think it's a five point i can see it from here um we'll walk up on it i'm interested to see if if sal will notice it so we're gonna watch her girl girl you gotta go find this come on Sal, where's the shed? Where's the shed, girl? Where's the antler? I'm still kind of just going slow, looking for the other side as we come through. Oh yeah, a little five. Cool, small, compact horn, looks broken. But that's a good find, because honestly, I've been dying for some horns that I can chop up for the pups. So, Sal, go pick it up. Pick it up, girl. Come on. Wow, that's kind of a, a freak. Look at his weird fronts. Get it, girl. I think it is a hard white. Well, we'll get the pickup. Oh, it's got a crazy second. That's cool. Yeah, it's chalk, but not by much. Very few cracks in it. This is going to be a perfect dog chew. Little, little bull. It's cool. Sword's broken. So is his third, but his fronts are crazy. Look how weird those fronts are. And this one kind of corkscrews at the end. Sweet. I wonder what else is in here. Okay, we didn't find any more sheds. It actually looked like there hadn't been any elk in there for a couple of years or so once I kind of took a closer look, but still gave it heck. Um, now we're gonna <clears throat> give it a little shot on this little creek that you can probably see behind me. This creek is super awesome. It uh, doesn't have a name. It's just a blue line on a map. Once upon a time, it connected with a lower creek that has a name. Um, but since then, there's a section that has dried up that's about two miles long where it becomes a losing stream and all the water gets lost to the aquifer underneath. But anyways, that means that these fish up here are some of the purest strain cutthroat trout that you're gonna find. Um, super fun time to come fish them. The water's not very high yet. Um, just classic fiberglass rod, seven and a half foot, four weight. We're gonna go small. Bionic ant that I tied down to a little midge dropper. It's a green midge, it could pass as a caddis or whatever. Um, the fish usually aren't too picky here. They're usually not too spooky either. That being said, with Sal with me, um, it's probably gonna be tough to get into some. She's gonna, I'm sure, be stoked to get down to the water and play around, so. We'll see how it goes. We're gonna try it for a little bit and then hike out. We got about a two hour hike out, not too bad. We're more than halfway done. I kind of did a big loop that ended us at this point. So I knew it would be an easy hike from this point out. But yeah, let's go see if we can get some of these fish. Girl. Hey Sal, I hope you got it out of your system, girl. Girl! <laughs> it's okay, girl! It's okay, girl! Just a little fishy. Stink, girl. No, don't eat it. I know you like fish, but don't eat that one.
Hey, 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 hey. Relax, girl. Relax. Yeah, that's more like what I was going for. So, hey. That one was tricky. He kind of nosed it first, but didn't actually take it. Then he came back for it a second time. And, uh, wet my hand with the snow. Okay, well that was pretty fun. We only fished for about 25 minutes. I think we caught uh, like five or six. Um, nothing big, we can usually catch some bigger than that out of here, but usually that's a little higher up. <laughs> oh, good job, Sal. Good girl. Oh, you didn't like that, huh? I have found moose sheds in here too before, just later in the year while fishing. That's how you know it's an isolated place. You can come up to a creek and I think it was like July or August even. And just right in the middle of one of these clearings it was a nice moose shed. And that was, when I found that one, that was back when I wasn't really, I didn't really know much about shed hunting and I never even stopped to look around for the other side. And for the life of me, I cannot remember where I was when I found it. But yeah, pretty country. You can't complain when you find a brown moose shed, a dog chew, 
style elk antler and you catch some beautiful native cutties. Good day, good, good day.